and wanting to get it right, wanting to be able to build relationships with technology companies so she knew exactly what these folks needed to be trained on because she has two clients. The first one is the people looking for the job. The second one is the technology company. And there was a divide there. So what we need in order to continue to be successful for this is we need opportunities to create talent and talent shortages that we're facing right now in Austin are not gonna be met just by people moving here. And even though everybody's doing the work from home right now, at some point we will be back in our offices and we will want local Austin employees for those roles. The second is the equity opportunity. Being able to create equity within companies to give people opportunities to grow and advance and succeed in what they do and the training that they can get through workforce solutions in order to be able to do that. And the third is the growth opportunity, and that's for companies. There are so many studies on DEI and on providing opportunities for people who have income disparity in hiring these people, growing them, putting them into leadership roles that makes companies much more profitable in the long run, and it helps them grow. So we wanna see Austin technology companies grow, we wanna see them expand, and more importantly, we wanna see Austinites get these jobs with these companies. So now I am going to let Tamara Atkinson, who's the CEO of Workforce Solutions Capital Area, take over. Tamara? Thank you so much, Amber. I remember that first meeting so well. I'm glad you referenced it. Uh, what I really appreciate about you, Amber, as a leader in ATC is that you immediately embraced uh, the mission of Workforce Solutions to connect local people to local jobs and see that everyone has an opportunity to share in Austin's prosperity. So thank you for your leadership, Amber. It's great to see you again. And David Colligan, thank you so much. Uh, the city economic development and you in particular, David, have just been a, an amazing partner to Workforce Solutions and ATC. And we would not be here and have been able to complete this project without you, David, your leadership, the city and Texas Workforce Commission. So thank you so much. As Amber said, we really are data driven because we believe that data is how we tell part of the story so that we can get to better equitable outcomes. And ultimately in a COVID environment, build back better as a result of, uh, of, the, of the pandemic that we're in. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit about the data and why we were also interested in working with ATC. In June, uh, the June unemployment rate, which is a lagging indicator, is moving quickly in the right direction. However, it is still more than triple the February unemployment rate which was 2.6%, Amber referenced that. However, there are some bright spots breaking through the cracks in what's otherwise been a dark last five months. And the IT sector is among them. IT is the workhorse industry sector within our region and we are determined to support it. IT seems to be one of the most resilient industries targeted in the Master Community Workforce Plan having the most consistent hiring patterns by month compared even to 2019. Just by way of data on who has applied for unemployment insurance, only 2% of all Travis County jobless claimants were previously employed in tech occupations, telling us that there's great employment resiliency within this industry. From March 1st to June 30th, there were roughly 12 times more job postings for IT occupations than jobless claimants who previously worked in that sector. For comparison, there were more than three times the number of residents seeking unemployment benefits previously in hospitality and accommodation occupations than there were jobs advertised in this sector. So you can see even sector by sector, in our economy, how important IT is and remains to us. At Workforce Solutions, we're conducting surveys of Travis County impacted workers to help us better understand the needs of our community. Of the nearly 1,500 responses we've received, we have found that 68% of these respondents are interested in career retraining, and the top industry that they're interested in is IT. 30% say that IT is their top uh, industry of interest for continuing education. 78% say they are looking for employment 
uh, and are interested in going back to their old jobs, but they are interested in IT. And 89% of those who responded say they have the tools to learn and train from home safely while they prepare for their next industry and their next job. This is an unprecedented time for many job seekers, laid off workers and businesses in our region. The COVID crisis has changed the way many of us work and it has and will fundamentally change the way many industries do business and deliver services. These changes have only accelerated the digital transformation trends that were already underway. As a result, the need for a larger pool of tech talent in our region is only increasing. To this point, I'll now turn over the presentation to Caroline Alexander, who we are so proud to be, have partnered with over these last months to present the findings from the study. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. And bear with me for a moment while I screen my, share my screen. Hopefully everybody can see that title slide. Is that right? Give me a, a nod. Okay. Um, so uh, just to give you a brief overview of what the project was and who the project team is, um, like Tamara said, I'm Caroline Alexander. I uh, have a, just a boutique consulting firm here in town that works around economic and workforce development issues. Um, and for this project, I partnered with Margo Weiss with the City Lights Group, who helped me with uh, stakeholder input research and the strategy development, and then brought in Sandy Dochen. Uh, who helped me with some stakeholder outreach later on in the process and is here to facilitate. Well, Margo and Sandy are both here to facilitate the breakout sessions in a few minutes. So I want to thank them for all, all the help and uh, on this journey. Um, so this project kicked off in the fall and was scheduled to wrap up uh, really in early April. And as you might ima imagine, uh, our, our course changed a little bit. Um, but uh, the overall project stayed the same. The first objective was really to develop a better understanding of the tech workforce and the surrounding talent pipeline. And to that end, we, um, we conducted a, a study of all the labor market information. Um, we interviewed uh, employers and training providers across the region. Uh, we conducted best practices from all over the US and we created a, an in-depth inventory of all of the organizations that are involved in the development of tech talent in the Austin region. And after we'd done that, we were able to offer up strategies to better align the tech talent pipeline with the needs of employers. Um, and the end result of this is a, is a big thick report that um, will be av available for distribution after this meeting. So just to level set about what we're talking about, because there's a lot of different numbers out there. Um, we are focused just on the technology workforce, which are the, the workers who are employed in one of the 13 computer occupations that are classified by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And that you'll see the, the titles here, but each one of these titles, these occupational categories include a lot of different job titles under that that would probably be more recognizable to, to folks from industry. Um, but of the people that work in these jobs in the five county Austin metropolitan area, there's 65,000 workers, or there were 65,000 workers in tech jobs in 2019. And this shows you the distribution by, by occupation. Uh, the most common area that people are working in is software developers. Uh, next is, is computer systems analyst. Um, and the pre-COVID projections estimated that, that over the next five years, this, these occupations would add more than 12,000 jobs, which is about a 19% growth rate. And one of the things that we recognize is that the technology workforce enables really all industries, not just the tech sector. Um, so we wanted to look at which are the biggest um, industries that employ tech, the tech workforce in Austin. Uh, so this shows you, you know, the, the largest circle represents computer system design and related services that employs 25,000 tech workers in the Austin area. Um, the other orange bubbles are, are what would typically be considered tech. Um, and then you can also see that there's all sorts of different um, 
industries that are involved in this. But something notable is that the public sector in Austin employs almost 6,000 tech workers. And that's a combination of, of federal, state, and local um, agencies here in town. But overall, Austin's, Austin's mix of tech employers includes multinational stalwarts, homegrown successes, and a very active startup community. So it's a really diverse mix of employers. Now again, these are projections that have, have not been updated uh, in the COVID economy, but uh, they were conservative pre-COVID, and as we heard from, from Tamara and Amber, COVID has just accelerated the digital transformation trends and the adoption of new tech-enabled business models. So we think these projections will continue to be conservative. Um, and overall, uh, the projections were that there would be about 38,000 job openings over the next five years, which is the 7,715 annually. And these job openings include new jobs. They were positions that never existed before and replacement jobs, which are, are the jobs where the position existed, but it was vacated because someone retired or, or decided to leave the occupation for whatever reason. And the reason, one of the reasons that we feel like these are conservative is because Austin has been and continues to be a destination for tech companies to grow and expand. Um, there's been some pretty big announcements lately and in the past couple of years with Apple um, and Tesla and the others, but overall in the last two years, there's been 28 companies that have either new operations or expanded operations in the Austin area, which accounts for 15,000 jobs, which are probably not um, taken into account in those and the projections for openings. Even in 2020, um, there have been 20 more announcements and another almost 2,000 jobs. So that's what we would uh, summarize as the demand side of things. When we look at who we have in our region to fill those jobs, uh, in the labor market as it was, it was extremely tight. You know, overall, our our unemployment rate was 2.6% in February. In tech, I'm sure it was even lower. Um, so we're looking at the supply of where we could find talent. In the Austin region, we have um, a variety of different universities, post-secondary educations that on average um, supply about 1,500 graduates. Of course, not all of those graduates stay in the region, but it's at least a place to start. Um, And when we look over the last five years, the number of graduates has increased 82%, which is impressive growth, but we still need more. Because when you compare our number of graduates to the number of tech openings that we'll have uh, annually, there's one graduate for every five openings. Um, and the 1500 graduates are just from credit programs, degree programs. Um, but uh, there's also about 15, 1,000 to 1,500 more graduates that are from boot camps and non-credit trainings. Um, of course, all of the job openings are, are not for entry-level talent, but you can see that we are really having to rely on importing talent to fill our talent needs right now and likely into the future unless, unless we do something about it. Another issue that, that Amber brought up that we wanted to look at was, was the diversity in the technology workforce. Um, so when we look at um, white versus the non-white uh, workers in the technology workforce, uh, white workers are about 60 64% of the workforce, um, whereas they only and well, non-white workers represent 46% of our workforce overall, but only 36% of the technology workforce. Um, and then with uh, women, women represent 46% of Austin's employed population, but only 23% of our technology workforce. So you can see we have a long ways to go there. Uh, and when we look at the um, 
the diversity or the demographics of our information technology and computer science graduates. We can see that the demographics are better and improving in that area as far as diversity goes, but that we still have a long ways to go. So the report has uh, pages of, of kind of summarizing the findings from all of our data exploration and our input, but just to highlight um, a few of them. Uh, you know, prior to COVID, the labor market was tight and competition was increasing. Um, and Tamara just highlighted how that continues to be the case with 12 postings for every one employed tech worker, one unemployed tech, tech worker. Um, we heard over and over again in our interviews with employers that there's a lot of interest in expanding the diversity of the workforce. Um, and, but we also heard in our, in our interviews that there was a preference for middle to senior level talent. For when we spoke to folks, uh, even when they were talking about entry level talent, it was a position that required two to three years, which makes it difficult to um, find those on ramps for our new graduates into the, the occupations that, that we need to develop talent around. Um, and, and then we also heard at the same time that companies are beginning to um, look at qualifications outside of four year de degree. They may be less constrained by that, um, but there are, I think I, it's about 98% of the job postings currently still require a four year degree. So that's something that poses a big barrier to, to building a more diverse workforce. And then on the su supply side of things, uh, like I noted, Central Texas has a, a pretty intense shortage of computer science and IT graduates. It's improving, but we still have a long ways to go. Um, but we did find when we interviewed the different school districts around town, uh, there's a lot of new efforts around IT and computer science. Um, there's some new uh, state legislation and federal legislation, legislation around Perkins. Um, that is really helping with the funding for um, computer science courses and then also the career pathways and how it's offered. Um, so there's a lot of hope there and innovation around that. Um, but we also see in the numbers that technology training is drawing um, fewer students than other industries such as healthcare, although that may be changing um, as the perceptions around healthcare careers right now are are, uh, are likely to be deemed as more risky um, than the, the careers that allow you to work at home. Um, and for low-income students, um, we heard about additional barriers that they, barriers that they experience, um, in particular, just uh, not having very much familiarity or career awareness around tech careers, but also um, feeling a little bit of imposter syndrome when they did have the opportunity to explore them and looking around and see, not seeing themselves among the workers there. Um, and, uh, and then we also heard from a lot of different programs that there's a number or quite a few mid-career adults that have already earned a four-year degree that are, are showing interest in building, going back to school and building their technology skills to transition careers. So that's a summary of some of the findings. Um, as far as our strategic recommendations, uh, there's a lot more detail in the, in the report, um, but I think it was David and, and Tamara had, had uh, referenced the, the Master Community Workforce Plan, which is the regional workforce strategy um, that Workforce Solutions is, is uh, leading with the support of the city and Travis County um, to really help build more bridges to, from poverty into middle skill and beyond, uh, middle skill jobs and beyond. Um, so this framework follows along the, a similar um, framework as the master plan, um, but it's really looking at the pipeline from end to end. To end. So looking at um, how we can build awareness and increase enrollment, we wanna cultivate interest in specific high demand IT careers particularly in underrepresented groups. And then the second strategy is around training 
um, equipping workers with the skills they need to succeed in IT careers. And this is really looking at how not only we can get students to enroll in tech programs, but how we get them to persist and complete those programs. And then the third strategy is around placement and connecting employers with local talent to fill IT jobs. So we wanna make sure that when people get trained that those training programs are equipping them with the right skills and that they're connected with employers here in the Austin region so that they can find employment here. And then the fourth strategy is around upskilling um, and assisting workers with the, with the ability to advance in their jobs. But one of the underpinnings um, of the implementation of this strategy is what we're calling the Capital Area Tech Workforce Coalition. And this is meant to be a coalition or a collaborative of employers of tech talent who really want to work collaborati collaboratively to address these challenges. Um, they want to, they'd work together in this coalition to define common workforce related pa pain points, um, to document and communicate critical needs, to adopt strategies, and really roll up, roll up their sleeves and work to um, implement those strategies. And the point of this is that we heard over and over again um, from the employers that we interviewed about all of the things that you guys are doing around diversity and inclusion and the different training programs you have within your organizations and how you're addressing the talent shortage and all these things that you're doing on your own. Um, but the objective of this coalition would really be to amplify the impact of all of those programs that you guys have by pooling resources and reducing the fragmentation of, of that landscape to really move the needle on these issues. Um, so we have, through Workforce Solutions, has the network of partners in place through all of the, the training providers and the community-based organizations and nonprofits. Um, and so uh, the next stage of that is, is setting up and standing up this, this Workforce Collaborative. Um, so with that, I'm going to uh, pass it over to, well, I'll start, stop my screen share. And I'll pass it over to Linda um, Jinak, and she is going to talk to us about uh, her perspective as a tech company. Excellent. Thank you. Such great information, Caroline. I, I really look forward to digging into the full report, as I'm sure everybody else is. Uh, I'm Linda Jinak, CEO of Talent Guard. We are a software company here in Austin. And our software really equips organizations with helping their employees um, really close skill gaps, upskill, reskill in order to build out their career and then engage in learning in the flow of work. So we sort of kind of call it a talent marketplace uh, in a nutshell. And uh, I'm also extremely passionate about skills and about careers. I've been a career transition coach prior to Talent Guard for many, many years, helping mid career adults. Uh, transition from one career to the next. So I understand that challenge uh, extremely well. And as a software company ourselves, we struggle to, to uh, you know, hire that talent and then build that talent. But most of our um, clients are across the board, hospitality, retail, tech. Uh, in particular, we have, you know, a Fortune 1000 cybersecurity company that uh, was struggling to get labor, not only locally here in Austin and, and in Texas, but globally, because they're a global company, um, because they had to retrain their existing software development staff um, on AI and cybersecurity and really get them amped so that they could continue to compete uh, and evolve their technology stack. And they were really, really struggling. And you know, as you know, it takes a really long time to put programs in place, learning programs in place specifically to not only enable employees to do their job now, but to begin to build those tech skills of the future. So organizations, when they say, when should we get started on something like you gotta get started now uh, because people need time to develop. We have to give employees time to develop in their job, uh, especially during COVID, not after hours. So we have to kind of bake that into the, the whole process. Um, and the reality is, is that most jobs have been impacted in some way by digital transformation. 
um, as you saw what Caroline said, the growing trend of Texas jobs that require substantial technical knowledge continues to rise rapidly. You know, as these applications of digital technology really diffuse across industries and occupations, most workers, if you know, I looked at just general job descriptions before I got on here, they're requiring some level of technology um, application, whether it's the application of technology or the development of technology to do their jobs. So training workers who are skilled in these latest technologies is our region's largest economic opportunity. So as workforce transformation uh, it, you know, increasingly favors digital tech jobs, there is intense competition, right, among other regions to, to get that talent just like we're doing. But Austin has really unique assets, right? We have an amazing education system. We have great policy, incredible research. We have great employers. And like you said, 18 to 20 new companies moving in just in the last few years. Of course, we have a great landscape that positions us to be a highly competitive force uh, in getting talent. So we need to come together to expand the pipeline of diverse students interested in proficient in STEM. We have to align the skills and experiences that employers need with what our educational institutions and training systems deliver. And then we need to improve retention of our graduates and, and our existing employees. And it's no small feat. Um, you know, I could go on and on about this. But what we need at this time is for the people on this call uh, and others to take an active role in partnering with us to shape the tech talent pipeline. It's vital to our sustained growth in, in Austin. So I would like for us all to work together uh, to make a difference. And at this time, we're going to allow you to break out into the, the sessions that we've established. And there are four of them that you pre-selected. And we're gonna do that in a second. And these are retooling and developing curriculum, identifying untapped talent, creating more inclusive recruiting and hiring practices and cultivating the next generation of tech workers. And as you know, with technology that we're using today, you might end up in the exact room that you want, or you may not. So once we pass everybody over, if you feel that you're not in the right room, simply come out and then we'll have Jess redirect you to the right room. So without further ado, I'll see you back here in about 15 minutes. Let's go amplify our impact now. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the breakout sessions and you got some good information. It's amazing how quickly 15 minutes can go when you're having fun. And it's amazing how long it can drag when you're just waiting to like do something fun. So right now I'm gonna pass this off to Tamara and we're gonna begin wrapping everything up. Tamara? All right, thank you so much, Amber. And thank you everyone who was on this uh, webinar today. Really appreciate it, especially appreciate and a special call out to all the Workforce Solutions board members who took your time as well. And really all the tech companies. Thank you, Amber, uh, for bringing everyone together. This is really important. You know, as we discussed at the top of the call and as we looked at the data, these are unprecedented times, but technology has proven vital in helping our community both survive and thrive. With the adoption of technology comes additional tech-related jobs and the widespread need for basic digital skills in all jobs and more advanced digital skills in the jobs that develop, deploy, monitor, and maintain technology. We've seen the resiliency of tech jobs in our community during this crisis and the need for a dynamic pool of tech talent to support the region's job growth has only increased. But, at the same time, this crisis has exposed vulnerabilities in our population and intense disparities that correspond with the neighborhood you grow up in and the color of your skin. And we have an opportunity to do something about it, guys. With the need for a larger pool of tech talent comes the obligation to ensure that bridges are built to populations who are underrepresented in the tech sector and to extend opportunities that provide financial stability and economic security to more families in our region while helping our employers build strong and diverse pipelines of tech talent. Thank you, Amber, again for this opportunity and thank you all for being part of this webinar. Thank you, Tamara. And I wanna give a special thanks to David Colligan and the City of Austin and their Economic Development Division. Tamara, her entire team at Workforce Solutions, Marie Madison's and Lee Munir, 
We did a lot of work with you all and we really appreciate that. And Caroline Alexander and Margo Weiss, who did all of the like work on the study and Sandy Dochin who came in. You all don't know Sandy. You probably haven't been in Austin for very long. He's, he's a staple here and he has had a very storied career within our community and a big supporter of technology and companies. There was some excellent chat that was going on. We're going to try to download that, get all of your questions answered if we didn't get a chance to answer them. We also are going to have our people that were leading our breakout sessions put together a summary of those discussion topics that were going on in there. And we're going to include those in the follow-up email with this, along with the video that will go out to everybody. We would really like to see who of the group that was involved here today that would like to get involved with the workforce solutions capital area i'm going to say this wrong capital area tech workforce solutions commission or coalition or we're going to change the name probably 15 times that's just what we do here in austin so we'd love to have you involved in it we'd love to get your input and your ideas as tamara said there is a huge divide in austin as to who is doing well right now and who is struggling and we know that tech is leading. We know that tech continues to lead. We continue to be strong. And so this is an opportunity for us to not only lead, but to, to help lift people up, help give them opportunities that they had no idea that they had availability for before, but we need the buy-in from our tech community. We need the continued support. I wanna personally thank all of the companies that we reached out to who took part in this study I know that, that things like this on top of everything else you're doing is finding hard time to, or finding it hard to find the time. I have been talking on Zoom all day long, so I apologize. Um, but you know, we're, we're really excited about everybody there. I wanna thank as well my team um, with ATC who's been very supportive and very helpful, especially Jessica who does all of her behind the scenes work on things like this and makes sure that they run smoothly because if I was in charge, well, they would not run so smoothly as Jessica makes them run. So thank you all again so much. Thank you, Linda, for being part of this today. And we look forward to all of you getting involved. We're gonna leave this open for about five more minutes because I see a lot of you are putting your information into chat. So if you wanna add your information into chat, we can go ahead and download that and get you involved with the community and get you involved with this project and this coalition. So we're gonna keep chat open for five uh, till five o'clock. So go ahead and put your information in there and we'll also be reaching out to you afterwards as well. If you have any questions or you want more information on it, please reach out to ATC at info at austintechnologycouncil.org. Again, that's info at austintechnologycouncil.org and our team will get you connected with the group at Workforce Solutions as well as get any information out to you that you need help with. We're completely committed to having DEI discussions. This is our first major step into the absolute buy-in for this. We know we can solve a lot of problems by partnering with Workforce Solutions and by making sure we get anybody who wants a good job, a reliable, solid job, and to improve their circumstances to give them the opportunity to do that. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please stay safe. And when you're outside, unless you're on a trail running, as we all understand, running with a mask is hard.